In the news this week is an inflation report moving the central bank closer to rate cuts. Durable goods orders soared in July, or did they? If you don't like the first number, here's a second estimate of GDP growth. And how are consumers feeling? Let's take a look. Before we begin, remember to like this video and subscribe for more economic updates. These days, if a key inflation measure is due to be released, you can bet it's going to be the data highlight of that week. That certainly was the case this week with the release of the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index for July. On Friday, the Commerce Department reported that headline PCE, which includes all goods and services, rose two-tenths of a point for the month and 2.5% year-over-year. The annual rate came in a tenth of a point slower than projected. As for core PCE, which excludes more volatile food and energy prices, that also rose two-tenths of a point for the month. Annual core PCE landed at 2.6%, slightly slower than the 2.7% rate economists expected. The PCE inflation figures for July are just what the doctor, or in this case, the Federal Reserve, ordered. The central bank is counting on continued moderation in the rate of inflation so that it can see its way clear to lowering interest rates for the first time in more than four years. As of right now, the Fed is widely expected to cut rates by at least 25 basis points at its next policy meeting in September. On Monday, the Census Bureau said orders for durable goods soared 9.9% in July, soundly beating the 6.8% increase projected by economists and marking a sharp turnaround for the downwardly revised 6.9% drop in June. But as the saying goes, the devil is in the details and an examination of the details here suggests a little economic mischief may be at work. A look beyond the headline numbers at core durable goods reveals orders actually fell two-tenths of a percentage point last month. We see this a lot with government numbers and revisions as they just corrected the jobs numbers by over 800,000. The core number was weaker than the flat reading economists were expecting, and some analysts suggest it could be another possible sign of weakness emerging in the manufacturing sector. On Thursday, the government reported a better-than-expected second estimate for GDP growth last quarter. According to the numbers from the Commerce Department, the economy grew at an annualized rate of 3% in the second quarter which is an improvement from the initial estimate of 2.8% reported at the end of July. The increase came largely on the strength of an associated improvement in consumer spending, which was upwardly revised to 2.9% from 2.3%. That revision served to offset downgrades in business investment, exports, and private inventory investment. It remains to be seen if the greater strength reflected in the new numbers prompts any revisions to GDP growth forecast for the third quarter, most of which suggest a slowing economy. Fannie Mae economists right now project GDP growth in Q3 to decline to 1.9% annualized, while the most recent forecast from the conference board says to expect growth to drop to a mere six-tenths of a point this quarter. Speaking of the conference board, its Consumer Confidence Index defied projections of a decline in August, rising to a six-month high on better perceptions of present and future business conditions. A look at the numbers reveals the index climbed to 103.3 this month from an upwardly revised 101.9 in July. Also notable is where a key component measure of the overall metric, the Expectations Index, landed for the month. The Expectations Index gauges consumers' outlook for the economy six months down the road. This month, it improved to a reading of 82.5 from an upwardly revised 81.1 in July. 
What makes these numbers significant is that for most of this year, the expectations index has remained below 80, a level which is a sign a recession could be ahead. Still, the data revealed that consumers are not entirely at ease with the nation's economic picture. Dana Peterson, Conference Board Chief Economist, said in a statement, Consumers' assessments of the current labor situation, while still positive, continue to weaken, and assessments of the labor market going forward were more pessimistic. That's all for now. Make sure to join us on Tuesday because the countdown to the Federal Reserve's policy meeting continues and the data matters. This is Devlin Steele for Augusta Precious Metals, signing out.